think it's hard to keep track of the date anymore. Uh, I think it's the 19th of April. And I'm at the YMCA normally on Sunday mornings. Um, this is where I have my Sunday morning meditation class. And I thought I'd share a little bit of this time with you and talk a little bit about how you're doing. And particularly in relationship to meditation and the teachings that we talk about in class as far as self-realization, you know, the recognition of the truth, the recognition of who you and I really are. And right now that has a particular meaning, right? Because uh, we really find ourselves in a position right now where we can't depend on our patterns. We can't depend on the things that we have come to use as ways to distract ourselves, to preoccupy ourselves, uh, to be uh, focused on making a living, to be focused on keeping up with responsibilities, taking care of your work responsibilities and so forth. All that's come to an, a halt. It really makes it a lot more possible to recognize the truth, to recognize who we really are. And that's one of the things that I think this has brought to most of our attention, if we give it our attention. So I'm going to take a walk over to the, uh, the walking track and um, sit down and enjoy some of the sun and the, the weather that we have here today and maybe talk a little more about this opportunity. The only thing that is worth really saying is that you are who you are. It doesn't matter whether you believe it. It doesn't matter whether you think it. It doesn't matter whether you continue to behave as if you're not who you really are. Because you see, if, if, you re if, if it really is finished, if you really get it like it's actually true, like it's always been true, like there isn't anything that you need to do, and because you get it that way, and because who gets it is who you really are, that you can begin to experience relief. You don't take it all so seriously anymore. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about any of it. You know? This mind-body is a limited situation. And, you know, I think it's, uh, I think part of what it takes is to really come to terms with that. I don't know, I just can't conceive, for myself or anybody else, I can't conceive how it could be the case that I could know, I mean really know that this mind-body is a limited situation, and really know that... Unless there is anything else that it will pass, it will end. There's nothing I can do about it. And maybe that's what it takes. Maybe that's what it takes. Maybe that's why people who come close to, to death um, wake up because they realize it's, it's useless. To continue to live as if you're not going to die. It's useless to continue to live as if you're going somewhere, as if this is going somewhere, as if this means something. So maybe if it's the case that nothing has to change and it's already, the truth is already true and you already who you are, then maybe, like Paul Hederman says, all there is to do is to travel lighter, all there is to do is to relax, that doesn't necessarily mean, and maybe this is an important thing for people to understand, that doesn't necessarily mean that you won't uh, 
be human. You won't have human feelings. You won't make human mistakes. You won't experience having a mind and a body and emotions and so forth. And it seems to me that if you know the truth, the fact that, that all of that continues to occur, the fact that you continue to have feelings, that continue, you continue to have thoughts, sometimes things feel good, sometimes they feel bad, sometimes things seem clear, other times you feel confused. None of that takes on the same heaviness. I guess that's why they talk about letting go and surrendering. Surrendering to what? Surrendering to the truth. Surrendering to reality. Surrendering to the fact that there is nothing that needs to be done. Nothing that can be done. And I guess uh, that's where peace comes in, you know? Rest in peace. You know, I'm saying these things because, you know, I've been around the block a few times and I've studied most of the current teachers out there and uh, have really been impressed by a lot of um, the skill of many of these teachers and the power of many of the practices to bring people to a place of possibility, to kind of uh, open people up, open people's minds up to the possibility of the truth. But at the same time, I also recognize that with all of the skill, all of the leadership, all of the spiritual whatever, you know, spiritual power, spiritual beliefs, spiritual practices, it hasn't changed much in terms of the fact that most human beings um, come and go without seeing or knowing the truth of who they are or seeing or knowing the truth of the way it is. So what that says to me is that there's, some, there's still something missing. There's still something missing. You can't it seems to me that you can't talk to who people consider themselves to be about who they really are. That doesn't go anywhere. Well, Paul Hederman said that. It doesn't go anywhere. So maybe, maybe if you get that who I'm talking to right now is consciousness itself, awareness itself. That's who I'm talking to right now. I'm not talking to who you think you are. Who you think you are can't realize the truth. It's such a paradox because who you think you are is the truth. But the truth that it is, it's the truth that you think you're that. That's the truth. You, the truth is you think you are who you think you are. That's true. And it's true that that's not actually who you are. And it's true that that is actually who you are. But it's the you being who you are, not knowing who you are. It's the you being who you are, not knowing who you are. And it's conditioned the brain is conditioned, it's conditioned so thoroughly that if you hear the truth, the you that hears the truth is who you think you are. There, I kind of get it in a way that, you know, people hear this and it's like they're exasperated in the sense that I, it's, it, I can get how people could see that it seems like spiritual teachers uh, are, are asking them to wake up and see something and change into what they see. And I can understand how for people, the way that is for people is, I don't know what you're asking me to do. I don't know how to be anything but what I am. And if I try and be anything other than what I am, it's what I am trying to be something. It's really um, a conundrum. 
And so that's why I think one of the famous spiritual teachers, Papa G, said, give up the search. Don't try and become what you already are. And the thing is this, what you already are already knows itself. What you already are already knows itself. So that's that's why there's nothing to do. That's why there's nothing you can do. You can't do anything about it. You could you can't stop being what you already are. You can't stop. You can't do anything about it. That might be a good reason to stop trying to do anything. Oh well. I hope that this situation, this virus, has shaken you up. I hope it has. I hope it's been a reason for you to consider your own mortality. I hope it's been a reason for you to recognize the unpredictability of life. And most of all, I hope it's been an opportunity for you to see if you can allow yourself to notice yourself. If you allow yourself to notice yourself, it's the self-noticing itself. It's a tricky situation because you've never known yourself to be anything other than what you think you are. And here you are, faced with a situation to let that go. So I hope that the situation we find ourselves in uh, limits your ongoing interest and ability to continue to try and make a situation that was designed to fail work. Life is designed to fail. an interesting idea to consider. Life is designed to fail. Everlasting life, on the other hand, is available. So, like I said, it's been a while since I have um, made videos. My classes have come to a halt. I'm sitting at the walking path at the YMCA, which has been closed for over two months now. And so, um, please accept my interest in your well-being. And please, take the opportunity during this time to, to just sit still. Don't even call it meditation. Just sit still and be present. Just sit still and notice that the awareness is, is there, that the awareness is here. Everything that happens, happens in awareness. You know it's happening because you're aware of it. And the awareness that's aware of it is what you are. You know, my sense is that if you get this in your bones, it will do its job. You know, it's one of the teachers said, you know, once the serum is in, if you get this in your bones, what you consider to be real will start to seem less and less real. And what you didn't notice and didn't consider to be real will, will, be, will start to become more and more real. Or you may be one of the lucky ones that something happens and the house of cards falls and forever after you know that you know doesn't seem like that's the way it is for most of humanity so the question is where are you are you willing to accept the truth uh, I mean really it seems to me that if you're willing to accept the truth, there's no way the truth can't reshape the reality that you're in.
so take care and we'll see what happens it's, um, we don't know what's going to happen when all this comes to pass but one thing is for sure time change unpredictability and the, the limitations that we are living our lives in will continue. So, take good care. I hope to hear from some of you. Uh, ever since this thing has happened, some people have been in communication with me, other people have disappeared. So I really would like to hear from you. If you have questions, I mean, if you're really contemplating this and you really are serious about this possibility, then it should be what you wake up to. It should be something that you're constantly contemplating, reflecting on, constantly looking at your life and seeing how to make sense of it in relationship to the truth. So I hope to hear from some of you in the future. Take good care of yourselves. And maybe we will meet again in person at some point.